Okay, in today's video, I'm going to go over an example of how we apply Kirchhoff circuit rules or circuit laws to determine the magnitude and direction of the current in the branches in a little bit more complex circuit. In a previous video, I made kind of an introduction and explanation video of what Kirchhoff's rules are, how we apply them, some things we need to be aware of when we are applying them. And I've also made a couple other example videos, which you can link to all of those videos in the description to this video. Okay, here's the circuit we're going to use for this video. We have a 3-volt source, a 12-volt source, a 75, and a 125-ohm resistor. We're going to determine the direction and the magnitude of the current in each of these branches. Okay, step number one is to identify the nodes. So we have two nodes, we'll call this one N1, and what the heck we'll call this one N2. That's step one. Step two is to identify the current and the direction of the current in each of the three branches. In this circuit, we have three branches. We'll say that I1 flows in this direction through this branch in the clockwise direction. I2, the current through that branch, will designate I2, flows from N1 to N2, and the other current is I3 and also flows clockwise around that branch. Okay? Now I want to point out that the direction of the currents that I chose for each of the branches is completely arbitrary. It doesn't matter what direction you choose. When we calculate the currents, it'll all work out in the math. When we calculate the currents, if we get a positive answer, then you'll know you chose the, the correct direction for the current. When you calculate the current, if you get a negative answer, then you'll know you chose the wrong direction for the current. The current's actually flowing in the other direction. You'll see that in this video. Okay, that's step one and step two. Step three, so we can apply the voltage rule, is we have to determine in which direction we're going to go around each of the loops when we apply the voltage rule and sum up the voltage drops and the voltage gain. And I'm just going to say we're going to go around this loop like this in the clockwise direction. We're going to go around this loop also in the clockwise direction. We also have this outer loop we could call loop number three, which we don't need for this video. So we're not going to do that one. But once again, we have two loops, and I chose them both clockwise. And again, it's very arbitrary. You can choose them both clockwise, both counterclockwise, one clockwise, one counterclockwise. It doesn't matter. It'll all work out in the math. Okay, that's step one, two, and three. And the next step is to actually apply the current and the voltage rule, and we're going to apply the current rule at N1 and also at N2. The current rule says that, for example, at N1, the sum of the currents into the circuit, excuse me, into the circuit, into the node, are equal to the sum of the currents leaving the node. So we're going to say we have one in and two out. That means we have I1 positive, that's the one coming in. The two are leaving, we just say negative. So we have I1 minus I2 equals I1 minus I2 minus I3 equals zero. Now, I can solve this equation, get rid of the negative signs, and I can say that I1 equals I2 plus 3. The sum of the currents in, there's only one, equals the sum of the currents out of the node. We'll do the same thing in I2. We have two currents in, I2 and 3, and I1 comes out. So we have plus I2 plus I3 minus I1. Solve again for I1, and you'll notice we get I1 equals I2 plus I3. You'll notice that all four of these equations are really this equation and this equation are the same equation. We only need one. We only do use the equations when we have a different uh, equation in each node. So the same equation, we're just going to use this one equation for our current rule. Now, we're going to go around and sum up the voltage drops and the voltage gains, apply the voltage rule for each of the loops. That's loop one and loop two. We're going to do that with the assistance of Ohm's law. This is where Kirchhoff and Ohm work together. Okay, for L1, we're going to start here in the upper left-hand corner. There are no elements in the first part of this branch. When we come down through this branch, we encounter this first resistor, 75 ohm resistor. And you'll notice when we go clockwise around this loop, we're going with the current. That means that the voltage is going to be a voltage drop. Now the voltage, we don't know the voltage, but we do know that V equals I times R. We know the current is I2, the resistance is 75, so we're going to write down that the voltage is minus 75 I2. It's minus because we're going in the same direction downstream with the current. Okay, and that's a voltage drop. Now we go through the bottom, nothing. We come back up here, we count with this three volt source. We're going from the negative to the positive terminal. That's a voltage gain, so we write down plus three. We come back to where we started, equals zero. So those two elements, sum them up, equal to zero. Now we're gonna do the same thing for L2. We start here, nothing in the first part of this branch. Now we come down here, we encounter this 12 volt source. We're going from the positive to the negative, so that means that's minus 12 volts. Now we encounter this 125 ohm resistor. You notice once again we're going with the current, I3. So that's going to be a voltage drop again. So it's going to be minus 125 I3. The voltage is the current times the resistance. Now we go across the bottom, and then we come back up on this side. And now you'll notice when we go through this 75 ohm resistor, we're going against the current. 
We're going upstream, so to speak, against I2. That means that is going to be a voltage gain. We designate that as a voltage gain, and that is plus 75 I2. That's the last element, and we say equal to zero. Okay, so once again, I just want to point out that for the first loop, we came down this way with the current that was minus 75 I2. For the second loop, we were going in the other direction, we went against the current, that's why this is positive 75 I2. Okay, you have to keep your positive, your negative sign straight, be very careful. Okay, you'll also notice that I didn't use my units. I didn't put down volts and amperes and, and ohms and things like that. There's enough symbols and things like that. We usually leave those off. It makes it look cleaner. We know when we do this, if we apply the rules correctly, we'll get an answer with amperes. Okay, so now we have our three unknowns, I1, I2, and I3. We have three equations, one, two, three, and we can solve for each of the currents. This basically becomes now an, a, an algebra exercise, basically. Okay, what are we gonna do? We have three equations. This equation, L1, you'll notice only has one variable in it, I2. So we can solve this very easily for I2. We can say that I2 is equal to minus I3 because we subtract I3, excuse me, minus 3 because we subtract 3 from both sides, divided by minus 75, and we get that I2 is equal to 0 0.04 amperes. Now we know I2. We can substitute I2 into this equation and solve for I3. So that means that the equation now becomes minus 12, minus 125 I3, plus 75 times I number 2, which I2 is 0 0.04. And then we get that minus 12, minus 125 I3, plus 3, because 75 times 0 0.04 is 3. Now we can solve for I3. Move our constant to the other side. We get 12 minus 3. Add 12 and subtract 3 from both sides, divided by minus 125. We get that I3 is equal to minus 0 0.072. The magnitude of the current is 0 0.072. This negative sign tells us that for I3, we chose the wrong direction. That's what this negative sign. It doesn't mean the current is negative. It doesn't mean that the current is less than zero, obviously. It just means we chose the wrong direction. So I'm going to take those two arrows out and replace them with the arrows pointing in the same, in the correct direction, and that is the direction that I3 actually flows in this circuit. Okay, like I said, don't forget your negative signs. Okay, now we know 2 and 3. Now we can solve for 1. We get that I1 is equal to 0 0.04 minus, don't forget your negative sign, 0 0.072, and I1 is equal to 0 0.032 amperes. And that means that we have a negative sign here also again. And once again, negative means we chose the wrong direction for the current, so I'm just going to change the direction of the current for I1 also. And there you go. That's the directions and the magnitude of the current. I1 is 0 0.032 amperes and flows in the counterclockwise direction. I2 is 0 0.04 amperes and flows from N1 to N2. I3 is 0 0.072 amperes and flows also in this counterclockwise direction. Okay, there you go. I think that's pretty straightforward. It's a little bit of physics with uh, summing up the laws, but then I think it becomes even a little bit more math and algebra, making sure you don't forget your negatives and your positive signs and how you do all that. Okay, so uh, follow those steps. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, please do all of the following three things. Give me a thumbs up for this video. Leave me a nice positive comment in the comment section below. Subscribe to my channel. Get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Thank you very much for watching. We will see you in the next video.